command is all in URL. So instead of all in title, there's a command called all in URL. So let me demonstrate that to all of you. So instead of all in title, I type all in URL, login, and I say Sibang. So essentially here, if you look at the uh, URL of the search results, the word login must appear in the URL. So every single search result that you have has the word login in the URL. And using the site command, we restricted our results only to the icsrbank.com domain name. So instead of just one word, we could also enter two words. Let's see if there is something like this. So if you, if you look at the results, now we have only one result where the words login and password appear in the URL and the site is icsabank.com. You can remove the site part of the command as well and now it will show you only all kinds of domain names but the word login and password must appear in the URL. Only then it will show up in the result. So that's another very, very useful Google Doc. The next Google Doc allows you to actually uh, identify web cameras that normally you're not supposed to be able to access, but using Google Doc, you can get, gain access to those live web cameras. Let's see if this works or not. So I copy this Google Doc and I'm going to paste it into this particular website. So let me open up some of these pages. So if you notice, these are live cameras from Japan. So I'm able to see the uh, cam the traffic in a couple of you know places in Japan. I can zoom in as well so that all of you can see what is getting displayed. So this is live traffic in Japan using this camera that normally we are not supposed to be able to access, but because of the Google Doc that we used, we were able to access this camera. So that's an example from Japan. Then this is a, somewhere in Europe. I think Rome, Rome, Italy. And the beauty of this camera is that we can change or tilt the camera as well. So sitting here, we can change the camera position and we can see different parts of Rome or, the, or at least from this uh, position, whatever is visible. And this one I think is from the US. Again, it's some traffic camera in the US that we're able to see. And you can change it as well. A lot of people have searched for, uh, for other kind of cameras as well. So people have searched for cameras uh, in the bedroom, in, uh, on a beach, and things like that as well. So there are a lot of these unprotected cameras that show up in different parts of the world that you can access using the Google uh, Docs. There are a lot of these forums as well, hacking forums where they have listed a lot of these web cameras that have been hacked using Google Docs or web cameras that have been found using Google Docs. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty dangerous and pretty scary, uh, you know, command. Who would have thought that by just typing something into Google, you can access things that you're not supposed to access? Another thing that you can do to access uh, cameras is to type this command. Let me just copy paste it into Google and share it with all of you. So you can copy this command if you want. I'll just open up a few of the results. So 
So this is somebody's office. So access is basically a vendor. And these are actual uh, you know cameras from somebody's office. So imagine uh, what an invasion of privacy this can be. Another thing that you can do is if you are searching for PDF files then you can use the extension command. So if, if you're looking for say PDF documents of some hacking uh, tutorials, so you can type the command extension. So I type extension PDF with the word hacking in it. So if you notice there are so many different websites that have come up where you can download the PDF files or PDF tutorials on hacking. So Google Docs can also help you do research better on the internet. Now what if you wanted to find administrator or admin login prompts of government websites? So you can type a Google Doc like site colon gov, that is gov which means government websites in URL colon admin login. So this will basically search for all those uh, domain names that are all those government domain names whose URL have the words admin and login. So if you notice now, if you look at the results, every result is a government website, .gov, .gov, .gov and all of them have the words admin login. in the URL. Similarly, you could change it to Indian websites. If you want to hack into say Indian websites, so I type the command site in, in URL, admin login. So it's showing me the admin login of say Gujarat Technical University, IIT, Kanpur and so on. Rajiv Gandhi Technical University You can also gain access to the intranet login pages or intranet uh, links So let me copy paste the command and then you can write it down as well So that command is in title colon intranet space in URL colon intranet plus site colon in. So essentially searching for Indian websites which have the word intranet in the URL and also the word intranet in the title. So you have BSNL, lot of BSNL servers, IIT Delhi, that has shown up on the screen. Some government website, MNIT and so on. So Google Docs usually don't allow you to directly hack but they are give, tell you exactly where to go to start the process of hacking which is why I have included Google Dorking in the information gathering and network reconnaissance uh, lecture. Similarly you can search for the PHP my admin links of various databases or various uh, forums. So just search for welcome to PHP my admin and create new database. So that will allow you to find vulnerable databases. You can also try to search for publicly available Unix password files which is pretty rare but there's no harm trying. So you can type the command index of slash etc slash password.
In fact, if you liked these Google dorking commands that I shared with all of you, there is a very interesting website which I like to recommend to all of you. It's called hackersforcharity.org slash ghdb. So they have a very large exhaustive database of all Google dorks or Google hacking commands that you can type to gain access to interesting pieces of information that I just showed to all of you. So just open your browser and connect to hackersforcharity.org slash ghdb. Couple of more things which I like to share with all of you before we wrap up today's lecture. We have covered a lot of different topics today. Um, what is website mirroring? Website mirroring is the process of downloading an entire website to your local machine, including its directories, folders, HTML pages, pictures, video scripts, and other files. It allows the criminal to get a better idea about the directory and file structure of the victim's computer. So website mirroring can sometimes also be a very useful information gathering uh, technique. And there's a particular software which I like to recommend to all of you that allows you to download an entire website, um, including the, the programming code of that website, the scripts that they're using, and including the, uh, the you know all the pages, all the links, all everything clicked one by one. And the name of the software is HT Track Website Copier. HT Track Website Copier. N Collector Studio is another very interesting uh, software that allows you to download an entire website at one go. Yet another software is surfoffline.com. Surfoffline.com. It allows you to download an entire website at one go. And then pagenest.com. Pagenest.com. And then wget. It's a free, I think, an, uh, another very useful software that allows you to download an entire website. wget. Now the last website which I like to show you today is a website called archive.org. It allows you to extract web page information from the past. Imagine that you're doing some research and you want to know, say, what the Times of India website looked like in 1991 or 2001. So you can actually use archive.org. They have something called Wayback Machine. So let me type, say, timesofindia.com here. And I click on Browse History. So what this website does is, over a period of time, over the last, say, 20 years or so, it has actually recorded what the home page of Times of India looked like. So as you can see, uh, it says it has saved 5,100 times the home page of timesofindia.com between April 18th, 1997 and July 31st, 2014. So let me see what the website looked like in 2001. So I click on 2001 and say November. There are seven snapshots. So this is what the Times of India website looked like in way back in 2001, November 7, 2001. You can check the date here, left uh, top corner. So it's a very, very, very useful uh, research tool, not just in hacking, but also for your, you know, college projects or corporate projects. You can actually make use of this website for researching uh, how websites look like over a period of time. Let's see one more snapshot from say September 2001, 400 militants waiting to cross over into Jammu and Kashmir. This is September 26, 2001. So
So that's the uh, Wayback Machine from archive.org. So with, with that, we are pretty much out of time. I like to quickly recap what all we learned today. Uh, we started with active fingerprinting and then moved on to passive fingerprinting. And I gave you demonstrations of both active and passive fingerprinting in Windows and also showed you how to perform active and passive fingerprinting in Backtrack. Backtrack, for the first time today, uh, we saw a demonstration of Backtrack as part of the AFCH course. Later on, there will be lectures that are completely focused on Backtrack. The idea was to just to introduce all of you to Backtrack today. Uh, after that, we saw the importance of why, we finally learned why information gathering is so important because it helps you to identify loopholes using security auditing. And then the most interesting part of the lecture today was Metasploit. Metasploit is a software that has all the exploit codes of thousands of different vulnerabilities and attacks um, built in. So we saw plenty of examples, which were introductory examples of how to use Metasploit to load a particular exploit code or, code or module and then use that to execute the exploit against the victim's computer. Later on in this course, we will be using Metasploit very often and there will be a demonstrations where I'll be showing a lecture once where there'll be two laptops with me and I'll use one laptop to hack into the other laptop. And I'll be using Metasploit and Backtrack to actually do that. So today was just the foundation, the, just the introduction, just the beginner uh, kind of intro or overview of Backtrack and Metasploit and later on in this course we'll actually see them in action. Finally, we also discussed Google dorking in today's uh, lecture where I showed you some simple examples of Google Doc commands or Google Docs that you can use to get access to maybe files or login prompts or admin control page panels or even web cameras by just typing some commands into Google. And then we also learned how to download an entire website to your computer so that you can analyze the files, the directories and the code if you want to. So we managed to cover a lot of ground in today's lecture and I think we have, with that we have Step 2 of a hacker which is information gathering and network reconnaissance. So we have discussed step 1 that is identifying the victim. We have discussed step 2 that is information gathering and network reconnaissance and we also discussed step 5 that is escaping without a trick.